Hey there, everybody. Uh, another edition of Roy's World here for you on the channel. Roy White at RW3 with another video. And um, I feel like I just kind of had to make this thing in some capacity, however it was. Um, everybody's been dealing with and thinking about the events of the last two weeks. Obviously, the murder of George Floyd, uh, the murders of others like Ahmaud Avery and Breonna Taylor, amongst several names that the list could go on and on. And I felt like I just couldn't put another sports-themed video out there without at least addressing this situation as it's affecting and gripping our entire country and also affecting the sports world in a very unique way. And I want to talk about that specifically because what I have seen over the past several weeks I am highly encouraged by. As someone who used to be a part of the sports media business, the industry, and hopes to get back into it someday soon, I applaud my colleagues in the industry who are finally willing to step up, step forward, and speak out about the racial injustices that have been being perpetrated over the last several decades and throughout American history, which quite frankly, if you're not willing to go look for examples of them, it would be very easy to bury your head in the sand and pretend that they didn't exist. And for the longest time, as a member of that sports media industry, I'm embarrassed to say that our industry tried to pretend that it didn't exist when it suited them in a manner in which, for example, Colin Kaepernick was the number one story in the country, they were happy to cover the message. But I want you to remember how quickly the kneeling protests against racial injustice and police brutality became labeled as anthem protests that were protesting somehow the greatness of the American flag, the greatness of the American way, or even worse, disrespecting veterans who fought for that flag and the freedoms that it represents. And my industry was more than willing to carry that water for those who would try to switch the conversation from racial injustice and police brutality to something entirely different, whether it's violence perpetrated amongst African Americans towards other African Americans, whether it's violence perpetrated by African Americans towards police, or whether it's just the simple statistics that African Americans in this country are more likely to be arrested for violent crimes, et cetera, et cetera. And I understand that those statistics all exist, but they exist under the framework of a judicial system that has consistently put African Americans behind the eight ball and minorities in general, but African Americans specifically. By the way, a uh, shout out to my guys at Oak Highland Brewery. Um, this freaky deaky stuff is really, really good. And I'm not doing this for a promo. They're not paying me for anything. I just had to have a beer because like I said, I'm outside, I'm hanging out at my parents' place in San Antonio, right outside of San Antonio. And uh, I had to get out just a little bit and I had to go do this video because like I said, I, I felt like I couldn't do another sports themed video without at least addressing what's going on here. So I wanna get back to specifically my sports radio colleagues, how I feel that there is a change in the wind that I do think finally our industry is ready to step up and play their part in all of this to try to institute change in our society and our judicial system. But I also have to ask, would this even have happened if we had sports to distract us? With all the sports radio, and I speak specifically about sports radio because that's the industry that I'm familiar with, but of course there's sports TV, there's podcasting, et cetera, et cetera. But for a long time, all of them, all of them felt it was in their best interest to stay away from the sticky subjects of police brutality and racial injustice because they were afraid it would affect their bottom line. And I remember being in meetings, speaking with other people within the industry 
who didn't feel like they could speak freely about what was going on. In fact, just as one personal example, I remember having arguments between breaks about whether or not we should refer to Colin Kaepernick's protest as an anthem protest or a protest against racial injustice and police brutality. And the argument made by my co-host at the time, a reasonable one, was that people will know what we're talking about when we say anthem protest. They'll know we're referring to Colin Kaepernick. But again, I say it's that easy. It was that easy to change the conversation to a point that now Colin Kaepernick has been out of the league so long that maybe the argument is reasonable that he doesn't quite have what it takes to be in the NFL. But the same people in the sports media that would have agreed hand over fist that he was being blackballed had no problem having a conversation or a segment on the air about whether or not Colin Kaepernick deserved to have a job to begin with. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where I want to take things going forward. Because as I said, without sports to distract us, it may be somewhat easy for everyone to start paying attention to what's going on and take a hand in trying to affect change. You can see from all the protesting that's taking place, all the social media coverage, it does seem like a change is in the air. It seems like real change is coming. But I caution you, and I still remain skeptical about whether or not my industry will truly stick to their guns, will truly stick to what I believe is right and just, and will stick to this message. Because the NBA returns to play on July 21st. 22 teams in Orlando will all play eight games of the regular season remaining until they go to the playoffs. We, it looks like we're still going to have an... Oh, God, I got bit by a bad one right there. Holy sh... Snikes, that one hurt. Uh, yeah, I need to get out of these bugs. Um, but as I was saying, it's going to be very easy. And I don't think it's going to be long until you have some pundit out there that tells these NBA players who no doubt will be continuing to voice their opinions about what has taken place over the past several weeks. You can bank on it. There will be no doubt in my mind also that there will be sports media members and even fans that are going to say, I'm tired of hearing about this. I want to hear about something else. Shut up and dribble. I promise you, you won't hear it in that iteration because we know how politicized that comment now has become. But I promise you, we will get something to the effect of, I'm tired of what's being talked about. Can we please talk about something else? The NFL has a glorious opportunity to right the wrong that they made three years ago with Colin Kaepernick. Now, did they do that in their messaging? Did they do that when Roger Goodell sat down and said that the NFL was wrong in the way that they treated Colin Kaepernick? Well, not quite, because they didn't exactly name Colin Kaepernick when they spoke about their wrongdoings in those instances. So, as I said, color me very, very skeptical about all this. I'm incredibly proud of my sports radio colleagues who have finally been willing to come forward and speak about these things because they're uncomfortable conversations that not everybody is going to enjoy on the radio and it might it might affect your bottom line in the short term okay short-sighted theory i know but oftentimes in the radio business it literally is how your ratings go from week to week so you can understand how they think that way But I'm telling you, be cautious. Be cautious when listening and engaging with these people. Be cautious in thinking that everything has changed and the leaf has turned if in a few months, when we have sports again, they completely ignore the things that we have been talking about and we have all been focused on over the past couple of weeks. So I just wanna put that video out there. Like I said, I didn't feel like I could put another sports video out there without at least addressing the situation that has taken place and gripped our country over the last two weeks. And I just implore you, as someone who engages in the conversation, someone who I hope is trying to affect change in a positive way within this conversation, do not let sports media people up. Don't let up, keep the pressure on, and don't allow them to shift the conversation when sports comes back with everything to distract us. All right? 
that's all I wanted to say on the video tonight. Like I said, hopefully in the near future, I apologize that I haven't gotten more videos out. Wife's been working and uh, I've been home with the kids doing the daddy daycare thing, which I love, but I would love to get more videos and more content out to you guys as well. So I hope to continue doing that going forward. But like I said, I couldn't in my own conscience go forward talking about anything else until I at least addressed what was going on with the George Floyd situation, what's going on within our country, and specifically what's going on within uh, the industry that I was a part of for 11 years and hope to be a part of again within the sports radio industry. So thank you guys for checking out the channel. If you made it this far, uh, again, I hope you're into uh, this type of conversation. I hope you're not too uncomfortable with this type of conversation because it's a, the type of conversation that I think needs to continue. It doesn't need to end right here. It needs to continue going forward and I hope we do that and I hope you will be a part of that. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. We'll be with you next time. Roy's World RW3 on Twitter. Oh, and by the way, check me out on uh, Blogging the Boys. We got a podcast, Broadcasting the Boys. We release that every Thursday underneath the broadcast uh, underneath the Blogging the Boys network. So please check out that podcast if you're into anything that I'm doing and uh, again, thanks for checking out the channel. We'll we'll see you guys soon.